In this video, we are going to explore the complicated world of Metro, but we're going to explore one of the least documented parts of this small British car, and perhaps one of the most mysterious. The weird and wonderful concepts, prototypes, and specialised conversions of the car that BL hoped would be its ticket back to profitability. This hardy little super mini was produced from 1980 to 1998 by three different firms, British Leyland, Austin Rover, and then Rover Group, until it met its demise in 1998. With any British car, things can get a bit weird, with variants, additions, and concepts being produced throughout the car's production run. However, none of them quite like the Metro. Some damn right weird, and some that seemingly predicted the future trends about 20 years early. These cars were some of the most exciting Metros ever made, and are just truly mysterious, with not a lot being covered on them. I've credited people where I can get credit for them, however, I'll drop a few links in the description below. Please remember to subscribe to the channel to see more of this, and suggest what you'd like to see in the next one. And are, are there any Metros that I've missed out? I can name one off the top of my head, but I'll let you figure that one out and we can cover it in the next one. Let's get right into the video as we explore the world, the madness of the Metro. The Metro 6R4 and MG Turbo saw incredible success in the 80s, with the 6R4 being a mainstay of Group B rallying until the class's eventual ban. Moving into the early 90s, the newly badged Rover Metro had been doing poorly. Without any hot versions to spice up the range, the car was relegated from the rally circuit to the supermarket run. Therefore, the newly formed Rover Special Products decided it was time to spice up the Metro. MGA, headed by Steve Harper, were selected to come up with some concepts of a high-performance Metro, which would be known as the Metro SP. The car was going to be powered by a K-Series turbo producing 120 brake horsepower, becoming the halo model of the Metro range and bringing some much needed brand appeal, knocking the 95 brake horsepower Metro GTI from the top of the range. This Metro was designed to be a true high performance derivative with the styling to match. Not exactly unexpected from the man who designed the Escort RS Cosworth. A number of styling sketches were produced until 1991 when a full sized concept was brought to life. And with the hot hatch market booming and the lack of an MG or turbo derivative at the top of the Metro range, why was this not produced? Rover in the end chose to abandon the project, with MGA's resources being allocated to the MG PR3 project, which later spawned the MGF in 1995. Sadly, this prototype mock-up has subsequently been destroyed. One of the biggest Metro mysteries is the Austin Metro Plus. British Leyland were looking to spruce up the Metro before its 1980 launch. Internally, it was decided to create a plus package Metro, which essentially was an Austin Metro HLS with a styling and performance kit added. The styling kit included a wheel arch kit, side stripes, bucket seats, sport steering wheel, alloy wheels, map light and a leather gear knob. The performance kit included an alloy inlet manifold with Weber carburetor, a free flow exhaust system, alloy plus parts rocker cover, and an oil cooler. A pre-production car was then produced by BL Motorsport from this specification, which was designated the Austin Metro HLS Metro Plus, with chassis number 00185. The idea was this package could be purchased on order of a new Metro, or as a package installed on any Metro ordered by BL dealers. The marketing team at British Leyland then produced a now infamous set of brochures and poster mock-ups. Sadly, due to the stretched resources at the time, BL decided not to go ahead with the project. The Metro Plus was then relegated to the history books. If this had gone ahead, the only Metro Plus produced, Metro 185, would have been used for displays for the launch of the Metro in 1980. So you may ask, did the car survive? Yes, it did. After the design concept fell through, the prototype was purchased by Dr. David Bullman, the technical liaison advisor to BL Motorsport. The car was then registered as KFC 535W. The car was then stripped down to its bare shell and rebuilt to be used in rallying. The car went on to compete in the Tour of Mull Rally, starting in 1981 and ending in 1983, and in 1988 was then retired from motorsport and sold on again. 
After this, the car was used for a year and then stored, not being used from 1989 until it saw the light of day again in 2019, when its new owner MOT'd the car, with most of the car remaining largely original from its 1981 rebuild. Sadly, the engine was removed prior to his ownership and is now running an A-Series from an MG Metro. It is speculated that this project was then sold on to Wooden Picket, as the nearly identical spec Metro Plus was then sold by the legendary conversion specialist in 1981. The ADC Metro Scout was a look into the future of the car market, predating the soft roader slash crossover market by over two decades, and the Rover Streetwise by over a decade. The Metro Scout wasn't actually commissioned by Rover Group and was actually done independently by a design and engineering firm, ADC, which was formed from the remnants of the Vauxhall Engineering Department of General Motors after the GM Design and Car Engineering was moved to Germany. The ADC Metro Scout was conceived and built by ADC as a showcase of their capabilities for the automotive engineering show at the NEC in Birmingham. The idea was to show the utilitarian evolution of the Metro range, perfectly aligning with the short-lived active lifestyle car trend of the 90s, with more space in the rear for easier access to the rear seats, add-ons like a bike rack, raised suspension for the full soft roader package. The car was so well conceived, Rover were interested but not enough to put it into production or develop it any further. Even Ford were interested in borrowing the car to examine and use in a customer clinic. The car was proposed by ADC to have several variants and my pronunciations might be quite bad but you might have to bear with me. Um, Le Petit aimed at the um, family, the young family, with a bike rack and integrated child seats with removable seats. The Sunrider for surfing, windsurfing and skiing equipment. This was basically for sporty people and was designed to carry sporting gear. The Country, designed um, at basically dirty boot storage people, sort of the green welly people um, with large mud flaps as well. The Metropolis, basically a city car for city dwellers with a car phone and anti-scuff trims. The Specialist, which had increased ride height and more storage areas. It was aimed at photographers with off-road capability, but not four-wheel drive. La Femme, apparently this is tailored for women drivers. Um, we're sort of going back to the 70s here with... Um, power steering, a breakdown phone, larger mirrors, a hairdryer, and a parking ticket holder. <laughs> My word. <laughs> the car was actually functioning and road registered in 1990, covering 1,290 miles in the most unique metro ever made. The Scout was then displayed at the Stondon Motor Museum for more than 20 years, but following its closure was sold on in 2015, with the location being unknown. And if you are the owner or know the owner, pass on that I'd absolutely love to see this car in person and I'd love to review it and take a look. I don't have to drive it, I'd just love to have a look around it and make a video. The Austin Metro Aluminium project was produced following the success of the BL-developed ECV3 project and was used to evaluate the feasibility of producing aluminium-structured cars. There were six vehicles produced, one of which is the only known survivor, a seemingly normal-looking Mark I MG Metro. This, however, was an all-aluminium replica of the standard steel MG Metro and was produced using a system of bonding panels using permabond adhesive developed by Alcan in collaboration with BL Technology. These cars were half the weight of their steel counterparts, actually predating the Audi A2 by two decades, which used a similar production method. The cars were tested quite regularly and finally subjected to a 30 mph crash test, which resulted in the other five cars being scrapped. However, the project due to slipping market share and lack of funds, was cancelled in 1985, sparing the MG Metro shown here the pleasure of being purposely crashed. So what of the car now? The MG Metro Alcan survives at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon. 
Many of us are familiar with the Metro's original design, a three-door Super Mini and its later five-door variant. However, another design was conceived in 1978 during the Metro's convoluted development program codenamed AM1. This was a three-box saloon version, an incredibly niche model similar to the Polo Classic Saloon and the Nova Saloon, which were doing fairly poorly in the sales department. And with the introduction of the core program initiated by Michael Edwards to sort of stem the bleeding, the financial bleeding of British Leyland at the time, this resulted in many projects being canned and any exploratory models being stopped early on to reduce expenditure. The Metro Saloon, of course, was not spared from this and was dropped relatively early on with only one being made. The car, however, survived sitting in the gating car park until 1981, until the opening of the British Motor Museum, where it resides today on display. Another Metro that was way ahead of its time was the pedestrian-friendly Metro of 1986. This is a car that basically wouldn't kill you if it ran you over, and was a one-off design concept known as PSC1, or Pedestrian Safety Car 1, which was the brainchild of an Adrian Hobbs, of the Transport and Road Safety Laboratory. Incorporating a completely redesigned front end, almost being snub-nosed compared to the normal Metro, the bumper was made of polyurethane to deform on impact with pedestrians rather than breaking their legs, with a steeply raked bonnet with a substantial slimming down of materials to be a bit more comfortable in the unfortunate event of a car accident involving a pedestrian. The headlights collapsed backwards when impact occurred and the wings broke away on impact. The importance of this car cannot be understated. This car was essentially the template for the pedestrian hugger cars of today. It was exhibited at the 10th International Conference on Experimental Safety Vehicles in July 1985 in Oxford, later being modified to become ESC1, or Experimental Safety Car 1. The car was a triumph of Adrian Hobbs and Douglas Allen Simpson, proving that cars could hit you without murdering you to death. The other mid-engine Metro 1993. If you're familiar with the MGF, you will know its suspension is a front-to-back linked version of the Austin Metro's hydrogas suspension. If you know the Metro, you will know of its mid-engined rally-bred family member, the 6R4. But what if I told you there was another mid-engined Metro, known as the Pizza Delivery Van, by workers who were testing it? The pizza delivery van was a one-off mid-engined e-play Austin Metro and it was used as a test bed for the MGF platform with the well-known 1.8 K series powering it. This car was used as a test bed for some time and was then stored and preserved by the British Motor Museum. One of the best ways to show how rudimentary this car is is to look at the hot label on the exhaust. That is some true labeling skill and does really really show um, the sort of sense of humour these guys had at the time and is absolutely fantastic to see the human element of this car. In 1981, a new car conversion company, Fraser, was established in Northamptonshire, teaming up with Tickford, owned by Aston Martin, to build one of the most extreme versions of the Metro ever made. Launched at the 1981 London Motor Fair, the car spotted several enhancements, with the most in-your-face being the very early 80s body kit. There were a few other additions, however, including a full leather interior, and I mean full leather, including the dashboard and door trim, a stereo speaker system with a graphic equaliser, a full body kit, as mentioned before, with four fog lights, teledial alloys to give it that period hot hatch look, and fully electric windows and mirrors. Performance-wise, the A-Series engine had a new camshaft, bigger valves, the compression ratio raised, a gas-flowed cylinder head, and a twin-choke Weber carburetor, resulting in this little Metro producing a respectable 80 brake horsepower and a 0-60 to 60 time of around 11 seconds. The only issue with this car, of course, was, well, the price. At nearly £12,000, it was in the territory of the Scimitar GTE, the target, of course, was 4,000 models. However, only 26 cars were produced, with Fraser being sold to Aston Martin in July 1982, which meant for a short time the Fraser Metro was available through Aston Martin. However, the acquisition did have its benefits when, in 1983, the Tickford Metro was produced 
which was based on the MG Metro and was a toned down version of the Fraser Metro. A few examples of the Fraser Metro survive, however, the Fraser Tickford Metro did not turn out to be the success that Fraser had hoped, with somewhere between 20 and 26 cars being built, but this number is unconfirmed. Four of these cars have sold in recent years, one in metallic brown by Percival Motor Company, another at Bonhams in 2004 at auction, another which was exhibited at the LA Motor Show in 1982, and another recently in 2022 sold by BCC, a classic car dealer. In 1980, Wooden Pickett, legendary conversion specialists of mini tuning fame, teamed up with Ogle Design to build a Metro like no other, with no two examples being the same, a bespoke Metro that could be specced up to £17,000. This car was known as the Laser Metro. With a complete external makeover, Wolf Race wheels, wraparound front and rear bumpers, graphics and roof rails on the outside, deep pile, carpets, air conditioning and a variety of trim to choose from, including wood and leather on the inside, the Laser Metro was a powerhouse with a 0 to 60 time of 9.6 seconds and 105 mile per hour top speed, thanks to its Rage 8 turbocharger, as well as other engine modifications. You may think this sounds like the complete combination. However, all that extra equipment means extra weight, which, in the words of what car, meant it felt quite sluggish by the standards of less luxurious but racier metros in 1982. One of the biggest selling points of the Laser Metro was the amount of customization that was on offer, which allowed for even more options than its competitor, the Fraser Metro. The Metro Plus by Wooden Picket was also introduced around the same time, and for 6995 was a less extreme and less expensive version of the Laser Metro, and offered less customization and standard equipment. It had limited add-ons with the body kit and extra customization being unavailable, but the turbocharger and engine modifications coming as standard. You may be asking, do any cars survive of the wooden picket metros? I haven't found any, sadly, with little information being available online, but of course the wonderful AR Online providing a plethora of information on this topic. The Metro 6R4 is a rally legend, with its purpose-built platform incorporating four-wheel drive and a mid-mounted V6 engine, known as the V64V, which was essentially a cut-down version of the Rover V8. It was a very to-the-point type of car, with six standing for six cylinders, R standing for rear engine, and four for, you guessed it, four-wheel drive. The 6R4 project was first revealed in February 1984 and scored its first victory in March 1985. However, there was a car that preceded this, an MG Metro like no other, registered A656NJO, and is proposed to be chassis number one. This was the first MG Metro 6R4 to be produced and was the test car for the Group B legend we all know today. This car was used several times in competitions, most notably for the 1985 National Breakdown Rally and was later retired. This car was then loaned to the British Motor Museum and was then sold, with its location now being unknown, presumed to be in a private collection. However weird and wonderful these cars are, and some almost oracle-like, like the ADC Metro Scout almost telling the future car trends, it's undoubted the impact the Metro made on the motoring industry and British culture. The Metro did not complete its quest for world domination, nor did it see its main goal of replacing the Mini, which outlasted it by two years, with the Metro ending production in 1998 and the Mini in 2000. It stands today as one of the cornerstones of British motoring history, and even with its much overdue demise in 1998, is still loved today by enthusiasts. These are just a few examples of the world of Metro, and if you have any examples or anything that you'd like me to cover in the next video, let me know. And as, you, as always, thank you for watching, keep watching, and remember to subscribe for more of this, and I will see you all in the next one.